there's a study of Anova Carolensis around an urban area. So, sorry, In our study, we, con we conducted a capture, mark recapture experiment. This involves collecting an organism of interest, marking it in some conspicuous way, releasing it, and returning on a separate day to conduct another capture, capture session. During the second sampling, those individuals that are recaptured are used in estimating population size by calculating the ratio of marked to unmarked individuals. This is, this is especially useful in estimating the population size of mobile birds. The focus of this study was Anolus carolinensis, also known as the green or Carolinian anola. We analyzed the population surrounding the UOG science building. Specifically, we want to know statistical differences between numbers of males and female animals, as well as the number of males and females collected on different days. At this point, we will discuss the specifics of the green animal. They are diurnal, which means that they are active during the day, and they spend most of this time on trees. In urban areas, however, where there are much fewer trees, they are often found sunbathing on walls or fences. Additionally, males in captivity are known to have harems of females and kill any smaller males and kill any smaller weaker males. This last bit of information will be examined later again. Illustrated here is a satellite image of our study site. The study area center is where we focus our collections. This area maybe familiarizes the area to the side of the building which is closed off by retaining walls. Because in all lizards, like most reptilians, are ectothermic, we, we kept a consistent collecting time which started at noon, which we believe is the time the gnolls were most active. The blue paint we used was nail polish, which was applied at the base of the tail. We used a non-flashy color to reduce the risk of predation from other organisms. We estimate population size using the lincoln peterson model method. Total population size is an estimate of big N individuals. M individuals is taken and later a second sample of small n is taken which contains R recaptured animals. Population size N is calculated from the equation number one. This model overestimates the population so equation two reduces the bias. In, model, in this model, population estimate is denoted by N sub B. Standard error can be calculated as illustrated in equation three. In order to analyze the differences in males and female numbers and males and females collected on different days, we first employed the, chi the chi-square test. Because our sample size was so small, we re-examined the data using the Pearson's chi-square test, which uses simulated p-values based on 2,000 replicates. This was done using R. Then, to analyze the day-to-day -day differences between males and females, we employed the science test. Rather than analyzing act actual differences between means, this only measures the direction of the difference of medians. Here we can see our calculated values of n are, appear to be higher than our calculated n sub b. Therefore, it may be that n sub b is a more accurate estimate of the population. In addition, all calculated chi-square values show that there are no significant differences in our data. Specifically, there are no differences in numbers of males and females and those collected on different days. The results of the sign test say that we should accept the null hypothesis, which is, that, which is that there are no differences between the total number of males and females collected on each day. Our study suggests that these methods may be useful in studying the null population, although some methods may need refining, specifically methods in which to reduce disturbances and increase sample size needed to be further examined. Because there were no statistical differences in numbers of males and females, we can conclude
conclude that there are roughly equal numbers of both sets. This is interesting because in captivity, males often kill each other. So in nature, we expect there to be fewer males relative to females. But our study suggests that, it, that this isn't the case. Further experimentation is needed to fully answer this question. Because there were no differences between the numbers of males and females collected on different days, we are left wondering if, this, if there is a, actually a problem of disturbances. Again, further experimentation is needed to answer. This study on its own is not very informative, but it can be a stepping stone for future comparative studies. Unknowns are known to colonize in high densities and often overrun endemic species. Therefore, comparing our population size to the endemic species, such as Slevenstein, could yield more informative data. Additionally, comparing our population estimate to future populations can test if green enrollments are increasing in numbers in the study area. In conclusion, it may be that our population in our study is fairly relative to our study area. Some ways in which we can improve the study may be to improve sampling techniques in order to further improve collection accuracy. 